Welcome back. Today we're looking at the all new, brand new TM192 from Tessman. The little smart meter that thinks big. Big shout out to Tesman. Thanks so much for sending the 192 in for this review. Smart multimeters are abound left and right these days. They are all over the place. This one is brand new from Tesman. I mean, brand spanking new uh, of this month. TSM 192 smart meter slash manual override. Uh, it has a lot of little features and some pretty cool things, even though it comes in such a tiny package. First thing you notice are those captive leads because yes, they are permanently attached to this multimeter. You can't take them out. So that is a good thing and a bad thing, but it is what it is. And while we're in the back, look at that. No magnet, no hanging stand, no tilt stand, no, nothing. So this is the type of meter where you're gonna be basically looking at it flat on the ground. Comes in a pretty cool little Tesman carry case. Nice quality here. It comes with a couple of Duracell, or shall we say Duracell batteries, but that's okay. Um, it comes with batteries. Ships in that nice color box. And as well, we get a couple of things. We get our nice Tessman user manual. This one is actually pretty decent. Look at that, smart digital multimeter. Different languages, but lots of nice schematics. Has all of the specs, specifications, you name it, for the multimeter. Good job, Tessman. Nice looking manual. Of course, it comes with those permanently attached test leads. Funny enough, there's no cat rating on the leads themselves. Uh, pretty good gauge, though. Fairly a decent length and pointy tips, the whole nine yards. Uh, I'm sure they're perfectly adequate for household mains. How's that for a size comparison? Awfully tiny, isn't it? Wow, the Sanwa here just dwarfs the Tesman. I'm telling you, it's like night and day. Here we are, still small meters, and they still look pretty big compared to the little Tesman. It's tiny, it's portable. That's not a bad thing. In case you're wondering, yes, the green boot does come off. But you really gotta try hard to get it off there. And you know what? Well, my mistake, everybody. It does not come off. That green boot is permanently attached. I thought it was like removable, but one screwdrive and one thumbnail later, it doesn't come off. Here we take a little closer look and look at that. We have our voltage resistance, a continuity, uh, voltage CDC, non-contact voltage, live wire, as well as phase detection. Small, small display, very tiny display, but somehow it's actually readable. Only 2,000 counts, so yeah, not the greatest, but hey, once again, it is a very tiny display, and you can only fit, fit so much uh, on that. When you invoke that backlight, wow, nice and crisp. A bulky font, but still, with that backlight enabled, it looks great. And as well, on the back of the multimeter, we have those two probe holders, so you can probe with one hand if you so desire. Gotta say, it almost looks like a, a walkie-talkie antenna, doesn't it? Breaker Breaker 1-9, over. Nope, nope. And we're doing the luminosity test, as you can see, 247 lumens. So not the brightest flashlight out there. Take a really quick look at continuity because those leads are captive. But let's see what the default leads can do anyway. Three, two, one. Oh, slow and painful. Oh. Well, when it finally latches, it is fairly loud. 74 decibels, maximum output in continuity. It's so slow though. Oh. Take a look at resistance right now. According to the user manual, uh, resistance range from 2000 ohm up to 20 mega ohm. So yeah, so this 100 ohm resistor ain't gonna work. Now to go from automatic or smart mode to manual mode, simply so press down on that backlight button like so. Hold down for two seconds. What? 
That didn't work. Now, despite what it says in the manual, uh, automatic mode switching, long press, the power button to activate the default automatic mode. Yeah, well, that's pretty obvious. Alternatively, short press the uh, backlight button to switch to manual mode. It doesn't, it, it doesn't work, it doesn't do it. So what happens when you do that? All you're doing is enabling the other functions. You cannot switch to a manual resistance or voltage mode or continuity mode. Uh, here we go, one mega ohm. Let's go up to three mega ohm. Hey, that's pretty fast. Five, six mega ohm. 10 mega ohm. Oh yeah, so even in smart mode, that resistance is fast. Let's try 300K. 600, and finally one mega ohm. Hey, fast for smart mode. Okay, we're hooked up to that five volt precision reference. 5.01 from the Testament spot on. Term DC accuracy, it is stated as plus or minus 0.5% and three digits. Okay, it's NCV time. Here we are at a standard receptacle. And look at that, look at that NCV picks it up not a problem and we have that nice red illumination as well just to let you know you are in the danger zone well so far it's an interesting little meter what do you think let's take a look on the inside see how it fares already turned out time here we go as you can see, there are the uh, battery bay for the two triple A's. And on the opposite side, there is the spring mechanism uh, that makes contact with the PCB. And once again, no shielding. Hey, no surprise. Tesman, that would have been something. Main PCB over here, there are the two test leads you can see. Now we have this sort of doohickey inside because that is getting, giving us that added strain relief because let's face it, this is going to get a lot of tugging and pulling over time. So you need something to take a load off of those wires and that's exactly what this does. So good job. Already not too much in the way of input protection, but let's be honest, uh, you're not going to be using this on anything really high powered. At least you shouldn't be. Um, we have dial clamp going on, some high powered resistors there. Not too much. The main IC here is cobbed. There's our speaker, the springs that make contact with the other side of the base. Here is our NCV. Can you see that? It's like that long metallic filament right over here so this is always a bonus a lot of times on these cheapos you see the ncv embedded into the main uh, pcb which just doesn't have that sort of you know good long-term uh, uh workability anyway end of day this is much preferred good to see it love it there's our led for the flashlight and over here look at that chip and right at the top over there uh, we have the GS324, that's a quad 1 megahertz uh, SOP 14 package op amp, operational amplifier, way at the top. All in all, nice and clean little package, really nothing bad to say. By the way, I just want to point out something else I noticed. Look at those little canals, the wire routing here. Keeps it all nice and neat, so even on a small meter like this, you've got lots of, you know, good, solid connectivity. Great stuff. Closing thoughts to the Tesman, TSM192. Yes, this one is a good one. Hey, it's small, it's tiny, it fits in your pocket, but it has definitely got a lot going on. It's missing yeah, a couple of key features like diode as well as capacitance. So that might be a deal breaker for some of you. But if it's not, hey, this is a great addition to your toolbox. Well made, it's cheap, and it will definitely go where you need it to go. Hey, you don't always need to bring up the big boys when it comes to testing and what have you. So having a small meter like this you can throw in your glove compartment is a great, great idea. The Testman TM192 gets a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Hey, by the way, something else i wanted to point out tespin sent me these multifunctional wire strippers a while ago tws 322s i gotta say they are the cat's meow high quality uh, beyond belief i mean these things are amazing i've used them a few times and all i can say is wow wow and wow really good quality i'm telling you tespin is a name that is definitely uh getting big thanks for watching this review 
everybody. Until the next one, keep on testing.